Here's something you've heard of that we really need to talk about. Stablecoins have been around since 2014. Tether is the most widely recognized stablecoin and Tether made stablecoins really popular. So what are they for? Stablecoins are dollar-denominated cryptocurrency, meaning that one token of a stablecoin, such as one Tether, is supposed to be worth one dollar. The supposed benefits are that you get the convenience of a cryptocurrency, such as fast settlement and less regulatory hurdles, with the stability of the dollar. This makes it more convenient to do arbitrage between different exchanges since moving dollars is no longer constrained by the existing banking infrastructure. Instead of taking two days to withdraw from one exchange and then two days to deposit to another one, with a stablecoin, you can often do this in minutes. So how do stablecoins work? There are two kinds of stablecoins and they are both more or less centralized. First, there are the fully backed stablecoins like Tether. These stablecoins are allegedly fully backed with dollars in a bank somewhere. Meaning that for every Tether in existence, there's one dollar in a bank to back it. The fully backed stablecoins are supposed to be able to be converted to US dollars directly. Second, there are the algorithmic stablecoins like Basis and Steemit dollars. Algorithmic stablecoins have a market mechanism to change their value towards one dollar should the token price go up or down. Algorithmic stablecoins are thus not fully reserved. At best, they're fractionally reserved. How stable are stablecoins really? Tether has been stable for a long time. Apparently, the mere possibility that the tethers are backed by US dollars in some bank is enough for it to trade at dollar parity most of the time. The rate fluctuates in the market and Tether has traded as low as 85 cents. As with anything centralized, there are additional risks that come into play that affect the stability of the fully backed stablecoins. For example, if the bank account with the dollars backing the tethers were seized, the value of the tethers would almost immediately drop significantly. The algorithmic stablecoins that keep the peg to the dollar through market-based incentives fluctuate more often and require peg-correcting buys and sells to kick in. For example, the stablecoin basis keeps its peg to the dollar through bond sales and redemptions. And the Steemit dollar keeps its peg to the US dollar through automated buy-sell using some reserve Steemit tokens. So what's the risk? Well, there are mainly three risks with stablecoins. First, if the coin is backed by dollars in a bank and the bank account gets seized, be it through AML KYC laws, socialization of accounts or government actions, the value of the stablecoin is going to go down dramatically. Second, there are a whole lot of other centralization risks. For example, the custodians of Tether could embezzle the money, or the bank could close the account and cause a drawn out legal battle, or the dollars could be fractionally reserved instead of fully backed in which case a bank run would ruin the coin entirely. Third, the algorithmic stablecoins are at risk of manipulations of the algorithms. For example, the software updates could have a bug that could ruin the monetary policy. And an example of that would be that the bonds bought in the stablecoin basis expiring, which would basically pay out nothing. Why can't we have a stable coin without risk? Well, the reason we can't has to do with the impossible trinity. And this is important. There are three things that central bankers want. One, independent monetary policy or the ability to issue and destroy tokens on their own and not by the policy of any other organization. Two, free capital flows or the ability to convert to something else at will. Three, a peg to another currency or stability with respect to another currency. The problem is that you can only have at most two of these three. Clearly, a stablecoin needs to have number three or a peg to another currency. Number two is what makes a cryptocurrency useful. You need to be able to go in and out at any time. Number one is the only way any of these stablecoins can make any money. But again, you can only have two of these three. For Bitcoin, number three is what is sacrificed, hence all the fluctuations and volatility in price. Stable coins are trying to do all three, which is simply not possible. And instead, they end up doing a poor job at all three and hide the risks involved. Should you invest in stable coins? There's essentially only one thing to consider here. If you have the ability to redeem stable coins quickly and easily, and if you trust the issuer, then stable coins may be useful to you. In other words, if you don't mind the centralization risk of a fully backed coin, this is something that you may be able to use in lieu of dollars in your bank account. 
Algorithmic coins, however, are a lot riskier as they are not fully backed, meaning that there's risk of losing money simply due to market forces. Stable coins are a centralized cryptocurrency that aim to maintain a peg to the dollar. And being pegged to a currency like the dollar makes stable coins more practical than almost every altcoin. The fully backed coins are centralized, but at least it's very clear that they are. And they're not pretending to be decentralized, unlike so many altcoins.